uh, Singers United Land started as uh, an idea that I had after participating in several international choir projects. And I uh, traveled to many different countries, not with an American choir, but as a representative in an international choir representing the U.S. And I met many other singers from many other countries in these projects and would meet the, many of the same people every summer or every tour that I went on and just uh, made a lot of great friends, but they weren't friends that I saw very often. Marcus Lepret, who, um, who is the father of the project, he's been there for seven sessions and he also have a lot of, has a lot of friends there. Uh, with my interest in teaching and having been a teacher in the past, I was trying to think how I can use these unique experiences and my interest in education to form a program that, uh, that I thought would be interesting. So I just sent out an invitation to many singers, uh, friends of mine who are in different countries, and asked if they would be interested in this kind of program. And fortunately, I had many who said they would be. I just wanted to experience to know something more about this country, about the students here, and I just wanted to challenge myself to be outside of my country for so long time. I was involved for the project called the World Youth Choir. Those guys forward the email, and then one day it just popped up in my computer, and I decided I'm interested too, and then I sent my audition for the soul. The singers all arrived in early September, the four singers that are on this current tour, and uh, that's the first time that we actually met one another in person, the five of us, and for the first two weeks we basically lived together in one home, sort of like MTV's real world style, and, uh, but instead of typical gossip, it was all filled with teaching one another our native songs. The piece they sang from the Netherlands was really cool, and <laughs> just listening to it was very interesting. We worked five to ten hours each day teaching each other our songs that they, that they brought with them from their home countries. And then about six weeks ago, we packed up uh, into suitcases in a minivan, and we've been traveling on the road to uh, northern Michigan. We've done three week-long residencies around the Lansing area. I just can understand now that it's getting like on waves. When I miss something, I miss everything. Food, family, friends. Uh, home, my own bed, <laughs> everything. Uh, they had stopped by last year to help us work on some pieces and then this year they came back and they stayed with us for a whole week and they've just been in and out of, mostly in the choir room, but um, they think they bopped into the band room and then some government classes, international issues classes and just discussing everything from politics to music and just been helping us out on so many different planes. For me, one of the best things is just watching uh, American students have a chance to ask questions of these singers that are visiting. Many times American students have an impression that this is the only country that's civilized in the world and it's really nice to hear from people of different countries that they also have computers, for example, and cable television and cell phones. We especially talked about like their politics and like the way that their governments run just because of like the election and stuff that's been going on here. They have a lot of different um, political parties that have power and there's not just a two party system in every country like we have here. Like we have other country or other parties but they're pretty much obsolete and they have strong three, four, or five party systems and many parties that are represented in their parliament. And they are talking about how like confusing it was with like the electoral votes and everything. They were talking about how in their country every single vote is counted. When I first had the idea to start Singers of United Lands, uh, a very obvious roadblock that I knew I was going to encounter and actually came to be true was trying to convince the U.S. government that it's okay to bring in four non-U.S. citizens legally into the United States after September 11, 2001 and give them a salary to be a musician. So right there, there are about five different red flags that most people are already naturally concerned about. Well, I must say the, the freedom that Americans have, all the citizens and the students, and it's, uh, I mean, if you're a student in America, you are more free to choose not to come to the school. And so that's, that's a big difference in Indonesia, and also because our culture is, the, the thing that we, we respect more, the authority level. 
Um, Soul has been in Corral every day this week, and they've worked on songs with us and sung some really cool pieces with us. And um, I don't know, I've also just been around the musical. Um, Roberto has been at rehearsal with us and kind of observing our practices. <laughs> My full name is Roberto Jose, that's my middle name, Refre Vilches. And uh, I'm from Lima, from Lima, Peru. I was studying in the Conservatory of, Conservatory of Music of Peru, National Conservatory. Uh, I was studying flute and also piano. And this of the singing is very, well, kind of new for me because I was, I started singing uh, five or six years ago. Their singing style is a lot different than ours. Each person is from a different country and so they all have different ways and different ideas of how they were taught to sing stuff which is a little bit different from how we we're taught and so it's good for us to get different input from other people. Share the music for example with the kids. Yes, with elementary kids. They're so, so, wow, so cute. They just go, uh, go for you and just hug you and, hi, how are you? And it's unique. I never changed that for nothing. Yeah, never. The students are in their reaction uh, when, when they see us and when we sing and their eyes and their smile. And I think that's the best part. I think my main goal to teach the student is uh, understanding that there are different cultures, not even so much understanding my culture, but just the differences that there are, and also that um, all these cultures are actually about people. Well, I think it's always hard when you, because there's a stereotype of Americans being really rude, and you don't want uh, people to think that when they come into your culture. So you try to be kind of nice and try to break that stereotype of Americans just being jerks and not being very welcoming of other cultures. So it helps to just kind of kind of try to interact with them and try your hardest even though there are language barriers and differences in culture. I must say that language is took a big part of the culture because sometimes when you want to say something and when you want to express something and you just stuck in the language because sometimes you use it differently and then it comes to the misunderstanding thing. Well, the five of us went out to a restaurant a few weeks ago and uh, one of the singers from Indonesia wanted the attention of the server and so he did this. And as an American I became immediately concerned and uncomfortable and I had to explain to him that in you know in understanding way that that's actually could very easily be considered rude <laughs> in this country. And Sometimes we think to do uh, such thing as rude and then for other I mean the people the other people think oh it's okay I mean because we are come from, from different culture. And then he wondered how am I supposed to get the attention of the server and as an American then I had to really evaluate and think about how do I get the attention of a server in the restaurant in the U.S. We are, how do you say, I mean, we are uh, open to each other and we can speak about that and so we can understand better each other about culture difference. Ultimately, it's just a chance for uh, people of different cultures, both American and otherwise, to, to learn more about one another on an intimate level, not through a television screen, but in a way where you can interact and have a chance to ask questions. The difficult part so far has been uh, learning their music, because um, we have this one song called Doa from Indonesia, and the words are just really tough. It's, we've never done anything like it before, and so it's been a lot more difficult. Like the music's pretty intricate, and it's just been kind of hard focusing on both the words and stuff. But it's fun at the same time. I mean, there's nothing that's like not fun about this. And the most rewarding thing, I guess, is knowing that people around the globe are doing the same things that we're doing here, you know, just in different languages. And, but they're the same kind of people. They all love the same kind of things we do, and they're great singers. Yeah, I mean, they're here singing and sharing a love of music 
you know, across borders. And I, I really cannot fathom anything better or more fun than that. And I'm, I'm sure they've all bonded quite a bit because it's just the four of them. That's got to be the most amazing experience ever and probably every, every singer's envy. Yeah. <laughs>